Now, any investigation can take a cop on a roller coaster ride, but this next case pulled out all of the stops. It's full of twists, turns, loops, close calls, and sudden drops. When we profiled a cold case murder in Atlanta, it led to a bizarre inside story about the lead detective. And as Angeline Hartman discovered, this unlikely story started a chain reaction that pushed this case around some hair-raising curves. Where y'all come from? Where y'all come from? Y'all don't want none. Y'all don't want none. Rep your hood, son. Rep your hood, son. Y'all gon' get some. You know, a lot of cops have nicknames. I've always just been Quinn, my last name. People, they know me. A lot of times, it's not just about police work, but they just know my face. That's all I've worked. Uh, murders at the hand, you know, of others, and usually in the hood. Yeah, we in the ghetto with this one. Uh-huh. Detective David Quinn had a problem. He'd spent more than a year chasing ghosts and dead-end leads in a whodunit murder mystery. But he wasn't ready to throw in the towel quite yet. We profiled Quinn's unsolved case on our show in December 2006 about an immigrant from Guinea named Mamadou Barry. He was robbed, tortured, and found murdered in the bathroom of his apartment. It was an investigation unlike any the veteran detective had ever worked before. And the case was wearing on him. I lost hair on the Mama Duberry case. I mean, wait. Mama Duberry was of a special interest to me. Uh, Mr. Berry was bound, he was gagged, he was actually affixed to the uh, shower rod. And the way in which he was killed, it, it, I know it's my job, but it, it got a little personal. I mean, it really did. Quinn hoped you could provide the answer to a key clue in the case. You see, he had searched a storage unit that Mamadou had rented and found a piece of evidence, a crumpled up receipt from a shoe store in Atlanta. The date, November 28, 2005. The same day Mamadou's body was discovered. He's gonna come all the way around this particular carousel here. When Quinn pulled surveillance video from the business, he focused on a group of men shopping. This man makes a purchase at the same time stamped on the receipt. Quinn believed the unidentified crew was involved in Mamadou's murder and hoped an alert viewer could identify one of the men. But unfortunately, nothing panned out. in February 2007, just three months after our broadcast, Quinn got word that his cold case was starting to heat up. Hello. I'm at home. What's up, Smitty? I actually got a call from one of the detectives that was on duty at the Atlanta Homicide Office, and there's some ATF personnel. They've got a guy talking about a murder involving an African. Really? Seriously? I well, right away, I knew it's got to be something about my Mama Duberry case. I'm on the way. I'm on the way. So, you know, I take off the apron, you know, from cooking dinner, and I'm heading on downtown. Quinn was anxious to have a sit-down with the man waiting for him at the homicide office. The veteran detective earns his paycheck in the interrogation room, breaking people who try to spin lies into the truth. But this time would be different, because the main character in the man's story would be Quinn himself. called me in. You got something to tell me about the Mama Duberry murder? Yeah. You Quinn, right? That's right. All right, check it. Tell me if this sounds familiar. Christmas Eve, 2006. I say middle afternoon. You were shopping at the Shoe Zone in Southwest Atlanta. I walk into this store to buy my kid a pair of sneakers. Hey, hey excuse me. You, you got this in the six? Sure, let me check. Yeah. I remember that day. I was with my man, Jeremy. Jeremy who? Jeremy Dunn. You know him? No, but what's that got to do with my murder investigation? It's got everything to do with your murder investigation. Hey, you, watch the you might not know Jeremy, but he knows you. 
your face at least. Hold up. What's up, man? I know him. Who? Him. What about him? He's a cop. Yeah, he told me about you. He said he's seen you on TV investigating some murder on America's Most Wanted. I'm just looking at this guy as the stuff's coming out of his mouth. I know he's not making it up. It kind of shocked me. In essence, I was under surveillance. He's working this murder, and he got it all wrong. How you know that? Because I'm the one who did it. What? Dunn said that to you. Yep. He said he broke into that man's apartment. I robbed this African dude in his apartment, right? Mm-hmm. Then I murdered him in his bathroom. Wait a second, I'm confused. Is Dunn one of the guys in a surveillance video from America's Most Wanted? No, man, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Listen, those guys in the video had nothing to do with this. Nothing. Nothing. According to the informant, the men in the video were victims themselves. It's crazy, cuz cop got video of some other guys he think did it. <laughs> Snap is coming. Turns out, Jeremy Dunn robbed those three people during the same week Mama Dewberry was killed, and at some point must have dropped the receipt. So you're going to testify that it's an open court? Yeah. I'm your man. What are you thinking when you're hearing this? This seemed too good to be true. I just didn't believe it. You know, it's right there in front of me, and uh, I'm eager to jump all over the Mama Dewberry case, reinvigorate it, and go with the information I now have. But Quinn had no idea that the new information would take him down a dark path littered with bullets and dead bodies. When we come back, the roller coaster ride really begins for Detective Quinn as his informant drops another bombshell. Now, before the break, we told you about Atlanta homicide detective David Quinn and his investigation into the murder of businessman Mamadou Barry. We ran a story about Barry's murder here on our program. Well, one of the alleged killers saw that story and then actually saw Detective Quinn Christmas shopping. The bad guy recognized the cop from AMW and discussed the case with one of his buddies, a buddy who would soon become an informant. The informant would spill everything he knew about the murder of Mama Dewberry and tell Detective Quinn even more. Now Angeline Hartman is back with the rest of this bizarre story, and it only gets way stranger from here. The informant gave Quinn what he never had before, a named suspect in Mama Dewberry's murder. The detective teamed up with the ATF and began digging, and they couldn't believe what they uncovered. Police say Jeremy Dunn was just one player in a violent gang called the International Robbing Crew, a gang that changed Quinn's one murder case into a trail of blood and bodies all over the city of Atlanta. This was a, a different kind of violence. An actual group that was working in concert actually pulling off these robberies where people were dying. It's Quinn. And when Quinn's street contacts began calling him about the international robbing crew, he knew the rules of the game in the hood were changing. This is one of the strangest cases because the police department was reporting to me that we had other criminals complaining about this group. Even the crooks had some kind of code of ethics, and apparently these guys never complied with it. One, two, yeah, yeah. Murders were still happening, and, and we had to get out there and do something to stop it. Yeah. While Quinn was trying to put Jeremy Dunn behind bars and shut down the IRC, police say the gang struck again. In May 2007, 
Police say jewelry store owner Randy Griffin and his girlfriend became the next targets of the international robbing crew. An ambush attack for cash and jewelry. Give me a wallet. Hey, give me the ice right here. Hey, give me a wallet. I got you. Give me the Fearing for his life, Randy fought back. During the shootout, Randy hit one of the gang members in the chest. Stay down, stay down, stay down. All right, all right, they're leaving. All right, they're leaving. Are you all right? Oh my God, oh my God, all right, all right. Can you walk, can you walk? All right, all right, let's go. I'm gonna get you to the house. When Randy rushed his girlfriend to the hospital, there was an unexpected encounter in the emergency room. Randy spotted the same gunman he just shot. He quickly identified the suspect, and police slapped on the cuffs. His name, Carlos Drennan. Police say it turned out Drennan was one of the leaders of the international robbing crew. A bigger bombshell, Drennan was also Quinn's secret informant, the man who set the detective on the right track in the Mamadou Barry case. Jeremy killed that guy. Police say for months, Drennan had been feeding Quinn secret information about the IRC, helping Quinn build a case. But Drennan never explained his own involvement in the crime spree. Now, both investigations were in jeopardy. I feel like my feet have been kicked out from under me. Here's the guy I'm working with all these months, and it turns out he's part of the crew. He was playing both sides of the fence. And to this day, I don't know what his motivation was. You got shot trying to rob some guy. Man, I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about. I can't use you now. You got no credibility. Do you see what this looks like? It looks like you really are part of the crew. At this point, you're no different than Jeremy Dunn. No different. And that's just it. You're going to look down. That's it. That's OK. What we're going to do, we're going to take down the whole crew. We're going to get the answers. We're going to get the truth, OK? Did you think at that point the case was over? This was a blow so devastating, I knew I couldn't repair it. I had to put Carlos Drennan aside and just move forward. The arrest of Carlos Drennan may have slowed Quinn's investigation, but it didn't stop Drennan from his scheming. Authorities say Drennan, from behind bars, plotted to have his charges dropped for good. While he is in the jail, he figures out that the only person who can keep him in jail, at least he thought, was Randy Griffin. So he then directs his fellow gang members to kill Randy Griffin. Detectives say Drennan coordinated the assassination all over the phone while in lockdown. Hey, man, it's Los. Yeah, I'm gonna need you to take care of something for me. Three weeks later, Randy Griffin is gunned down outside a nightclub in downtown Atlanta, which in our estimation is a clear-cut case of malice murder. A confirmation call was placed by Carlos Drennan, whereupon he learned Randy Griffin had been eliminated. What up? What up, girl? Police say that jailhouse phone call was recorded. Hello, what up? Who's talking? That's Carlos actually talking to his girlfriend after he makes a phone call to her from the jail. You know my auntie Monique. Yeah, auntie who? Monique. Uh -uh. Is there a Monique? She has no auntie Monique. We've confirmed that. 
She's talking in code. She's talking about his gang member named Mo. You're not dumb, Carlos. You remember my auntie Mo Neek? Mo Neek. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you listen, you can all actually right. hear he finally catches on. Now he's all ears. I thought she killed her husband last night. She did. Yes. That was the code to let him know that Mo actually killed Randy Griffin. So it's OV, huh? Yep. Where were they at? She got mad at him because she went to the club. What he's trying to get is some kind of location. Where did it occur? I mean, he's in jail. He wants a play-by-play now. What club, you know? Uh, what? Huh? 112, something like that. I don't know. You can see she's nervous. I mean, but she actually gives out the location, which is Club 112. Which is exactly where it happened. Right there. Randy Griffin exited Club 112 and was gunned down in the parking lot of that same nightclub. So you telling me 100% that it's over? Yes. So that's something, that's something we ain't got to worry about no more, huh? That's messed up. Uh, that's life, ain't it? We had to look closer at Carlos Drennan at that point. Those jail recordings, it brought everything together, and it, it made us understand how he played a role in that case, whereas before, we were just taking his information and trying to verify it. All the attorneys are here now. Between the taped conversations and the tireless work of Detective Quinn and the ATF, investigators were able to keep Carlos Drennan locked up they also took down 13 other members of the international robbing crew, including Jeremy Dunn and two other thugs, charging that trio with the brutal murder of Mamadou Barry, the case that started a chain reaction to justice. Who knew it would turn out to be like this? We are investigating the death of Mr. Mamadou Barry. And then from that investigation, six other investigations open up. The airing of the story on America's Most Wanted to me was, was that hook that took us down the road that solved a total of seven murders. It all happened for a reason, I, I guess the way it was supposed to happen. You know, this show can work in some strange and mysterious ways, but lots of people come forward, lots of things get done, and bad guys are off the street. Since our original airing of the Mamadou Barry murder case, cops keep finding more ties to other violent crimes. To date, investigators have arrested a total of 15 people in eight different murder cases. Now, it's been a long road to justice for all of the victims involved. The first IRC case is scheduled for trial this April. It all started with one cold case, and no matter how it happened, we're really glad to get to see all of these dangerous dirtbags behind bars.